Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Carla, also known as Little Fit Devil, and today I have a second part of About Me. So I have created this video three years ago where I really just go on on a monologue about everything about me from the moment I was born all the way till I want to say a couple years ago. So I've been wanting to kind of like give you guys an update on my life, what's going on, but I decided to do this in a little bit of a more fun way, of a less dry kind of way. Now I have been on YouTube for a couple of years, so I feel like, you know, I have a little bit more juice to me. <laughs> and by juice, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm not as shy. So I created a community post not too long ago and I asked you guys to ask me questions. So I will go ahead and just start answering them. Hopefully we can get a good segue from that last part of my About Me video from a few years ago. If you guys are interested in the whole story, please go ahead and check out the link in the description of this video. I will definitely be putting that link there. And I refer people there when they want to know a little bit more about me. That is the original one. That is kind of like the whole story. But today I'm going to answer some questions. I'm going to kind of give you an update of where my life has uh, taken me since that last video a few years ago. I'm going to be using my iPad to go through these questions and uh, hopefully it will make for a good video. I live in Florida, but for some reason today it is really cold, especially here in my place. And I refuse to turn on the heat and I made myself some coffee and I promise you, I was dressed all cute for you all and I was looking all fly and now I'm wearing, you know, joggers and a crappy jacket. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> Please forgive me. I wanted to kind of keep it real. So I'm just gonna go through this post and start reading. First question, hi Carla, how long have you had Serge? Or should I say, how long has he adopted you? So Serge is my cat, He's sleeping in my room. I had had Serge for about five years. I adopted him in Bozeman, Montana before I moved to Florida. I was not looking for a pet. I uh, used to visit the animal shelters in Bozeman just because I thought it was kind of like a nice thing to do. And at that time, my son was two years old. So I took him with me and we kind of went and we both fell in love with this cute little black cat. And I knew I was moving in like three months. Um, I got him anyway. I did the whole thing. I got the kitty, I got him acclimated. And as soon as he got acclimated, we flew right to Marco Island and here he is. I named him Serge after the vocalist for System of a Down, my most favorite band, and he's a sweetheart. I really love him. Next question. Hello, Carla. No te llama la atención hacer contenido en español. ¿Por qué no hacer la prueba? Abrazo fuerte desde México. Translation is if I have no desire to make Spanish content and why not try? Well, it's not that I don't have any desire. I feel like my audience is mainly, you know, English speaking. You know, when I look at my audience stats, most of them are in the US or Canada, um, some in Europe and quite a few in Brazil, but not a lot of Spanish speaking, really. I'm sure that it would maybe make my channel popular as well. I just haven't really like dabbed into that. And to be completely honest, I don't have the time. I have been wanting to do so much more on my channels. I've been really considering doing like a fitness portion of YouTube, you know, where I share my workouts. A lot of people are always asking me about my workouts and I feel like that's one of the next things I want to do. Blogging more, beach more, food related channel, but you guys, I'm already busy as it is. I actually enjoy the lifestyle that I have quite a bit and I just don't want to overdo it. I feel like for the longest time in my life, I have not had the ability to say no and to take a break and to enjoy the fruits of all my hard work. And I feel like today at 36 years old, I feel like I'm at the right place where I can say, you know what, I am happy with what I have. I don't need to be doing anything else. This is not a race to see how much more I can make or how much more visibility in the industry I can have. I really just love my life as it is. And I want to kind of maintain and continue and grow slowly. If that makes sense. Hey Carla, I have enjoyed all of your work and I was just curious if you have plans on creating content on OF or anywhere else in the future. The only fans question is here. <laughs> I want to maybe take the opportunity to explain why I'm not doing OnlyFans, why I'm doing Patreon, and what I feel are the differences between one or the other. Okay, let's start with my Patreon. So I decided to open my Patreon, I wanna say a couple years ago, and then I decided to go full speed on it at the beginning of 2023. And 
The reason for Patreon was to have a place where I could store all the content that I was creating that was going nowhere. So if I had a brand deal on Instagram or if I even like took photos, took so many and only one made it on the platform. So I decided to kind of like make that into a photo shoot and provide it to fans, people that want to see more of me, that were interested in what I was doing and put it on Patreon. To be completely honest with you, Patreon is also a platform that allows people like me, content creators, to get funded, right? Instagram, as you know, that was my original platform, never paid me a penny with the exception of the Reels bonuses that are now gone. So as a mainly Instagram content creator, at least back in the day, I wasn't making any money. So this was a way for me to kind of start making money from the content I was creating. Now, of course, I am a paid content creator on YouTube and it represents actually most of my income. However, the support that people give me on Patreon allow me to continue to create really cool content. It kind of helps me really make this worth it and make this a career move, if you will. What can you expect on my Patreon is really um, cosplays, lingeries, bikini photo shoots, things that I find really fun to do. Um, you can also expect exclusive stickers. I also do polls. Um, you get a chance to talk to me, um, but, but here is where I draw the line and here is where the differentiation between Patreon and OnlyFans come in. I am not selling the fact that you can talk to me in any way, but maybe asking me a question. I am not here to entertain your sexual desires. I am also not uh, posting any custom made content. I am also not gonna do that. None of my content has nudity, nor it will have. The best you can get is maybe uh, an artsy implied kind of thing. But I always am very transparent about what I provide on Patreon. There's multiple tiers. You can read the description in all of them. There's nothing to hide. Um, and I'm not trying to sell something that I am not doing. So I feel like if I were to create an OnlyFans, I could probably make really good money. However, I feel like I would be sort of utilizing the platform as trickery. And, and the reason for that, I'm saying this is because people, when they think of OnlyFans, they're expecting a specific kind of content. The site works on tips a lot of the time and you do get kind of like that ability to chat with a content creator. I also feel like maybe the expectation is for the content to be like, kind of like a level above of what I do on Patreon. So. I really don't feel like my content is OnlyFans worthy. Interestingly enough, OnlyFans is not just for erotic content. It's definitely a place where people put their content just like I do on Patreon. That same content I put on Patreon, I could be putting on OnlyFans. I just don't want it to be deceitful because of the thought that some of you may have. So I have not really thought about doing OnlyFans just because I would be literally posting the same on Patreon. Therefore, I kind of feel it's not necessary. I have so much support on Patreon. Last month, I had over 400 patrons. I am blown away. Um, however, I just don't, I don't feel like OnlyFans is gonna be the right move for me. And if you guys know anything about me, I have three degrees, including a PhD, and I have worked in the corporate world in a Fortune 100 company for seven years of my life. I have then moved into, you know, a smaller company like Microtech and the marketing department just kind of chasing what I thought was my dream job and only to realize that although I have all that education, I really don't want to be doing a nine to five job. And this is not to, you know, say anything bad about those jobs. They have a place and they have, you know, and people need them. And for some people is what works for them. I prefer to have my own schedule, to have my own work-life balance. I have done that kind of work for many years. I have worked more than enough. And I have been blessed with the opportunity and the guts to have started this YouTube channel in my 30s and putting myself out there and really make a living out of that. So I pat myself in the back because I feel like it takes a little bit of, you know, thick skin to do some of these things. Um, and I don't think a lot of people realize that. A lot of people comment and say things. Moving on. Hey, Carla, do you have any special Christmas traditions that you do each year? What are all the different countries that you've been to? Growing up back in Argentina, you know, we put the Christmas tree up on December 8th. We took it down on February 6th, which was the Dia de los Reyes Magos. 
And um, that was a really cool tradition. I remember that day was one of my most favorite ones, even more than Christmas, because we used to put our shoes um, sort of by the Christmas tree and then wise men, I guess that's how they call them here, gifts on them. And I thought that was the coolest thing growing up. Um, as for now, I really don't. There's a Christmas parade here in town that I really like to attend and just spending time with the family, very chill. As for the different countries I've been to, I haven't really been to a lot of different countries. I traveled a lot around the US and when I lived in South America, I have done like short trips to Uruguay, which is right next door to Argentina. Um, and I've been to New Zealand. So my main are the US, Argentina, Uruguay, and New Zealand. I think I spent like a, over a month in New Zealand. It was a, kind of like a goal to live there and then it didn't work out. What is your latest EDC blade? Believe it or not, and I'm not trying to plug my own knife here, is uh, the collaboration between Bastard's Knives and myself. It is the Venator Little Fit Devil Edition. Let me show you. Okay, so here you have it. I actually have three of them left on my website, littlefitdevil.com, so if you guys are interested, you can check it out. Um, I have not really advertised them much because there have been only nine of them made and I kind of want for the right people to have them so this is it I'm going to show it to you guys really quickly it has the bastard knives logo and this is how you know it's my edition with the little fit devil there and also because the handle it's a carbon fiber but it does have kind of like the red sparkles in there you can see it and it's super smooth really really nice knife I hope you like it if you're interested please go ahead and check it out on my website. Can you show us your fragrance collection? Hold up. My fragrance collection. Okay. <laughs> so this is pretty much my main and only real perfume that I wear. This is Noah by Cacharel. And I've been wearing this for, I don't even know how long, but a very, very long time, like 20 years kind of deal. I feel like it's my smell now. Um, I have tried Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana and I really loved it. Uh, but I also wear this thing, and this is like a new thing that I have acquired. This is the Brazilian Crush by Sol de Janeiro. You buy this on Amazon, it's not super expensive, but it smells like beach and heaven combined. But really, it's kind of like a pistachio and salted caramel, notes of almond, jasmine petals, vanilla, and sandalwood. So it's really sweet, very nice. I use this more for like day nights and this more for like every day. Hope that answered your question. How much cardio as opposed to strength training do you do? I do pretty much 0.5% <laughs> cardio. I don't do cardio, you guys, ever. It's not my cup of tea. That's not what I work for. There's a lot of research out there that even, you know, can tell you that cardio is really not even great for losing weight. I mean, I'm not gonna like come here and be all scientific on you guys, but cardio has never worked for me. I tend to lose more weight um, and it's harder for me to gain weight. So I have done strength training for six years now. I am gonna tell you, I've always had good genes. I've always had kind of like a nice bottom, if that makes sense, but it was small, you know? So it took me all of those five years to build what I have now. And I feel like now I'm in a maintenance phase. I am happy that I have worked hard as much as I have in the last five years to be able to maintain. But no, I do not do cardio. I, I lift heavy. Um, I also lift body weight. I now do both, but for pretty much three years, I have done heavy lifting four times a week, nonstop. And voila. <laughs> What is your favorite metal band? System of a Down would have to be it. Um, I love Gojira. I like Behemoth. I like uh, Disturbed. I like Sleep Token. I like Falling in Reverse. But I feel like a lot of these bands that I'm naming kind of like towards the end are not quite metal. They have like hints of metal or songs that are metal. But mainly it's System of a Down. This one's funny. If you were a mermaid, what color tail would you have and what waterway would you prefer to crash in? <laughs> um, I would go with really dark blue, kind of like my jacket. I really like blue, but I feel like in the water it would be kind of nice to have a darker blue, assuming that the water is going to be a little lighter. And I would probably crash somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea, <laughs> just because I like the scenery. What was your position in the military? How did you get into knives? I was a 91 Bravo, which is a wheeled vehicle mechanic. 
I was in the military for six years plus two in the inactive reserves. And how I got into knives was really after the military. During my military career, I was very into, you know, the AR-15s, you know, I got into pistol shooting and all that, and I was kind of into guns. And then I realized that although guns are great, it's not something that you can just throw on a purse and carry anywhere. And I felt like knives give me kind of that sense of peace and a great tool to have. Um, so I got one. My first knife was a Browse Blades. That was really cool. I got the Browse Blades. I did a quick review on my Instagram. It was, I don't even know, like six years ago. And after that review, I started kind of like looking into more and more knives. Then I got some Bastinelli's and then I started collaborations in the knife industry. And then my knife collection just went nuts. What do you like to do the most to relax and chill? I love gaming. So if you tell me, hey, Carla, today you're going to have the whole day off. There's nothing for you to do. What are you going to do? Well, I will definitely open my iPad and I will play Magic the Gathering for a little while until I get upset because my... Uh, decks don't win anything unless they're a meta deck. Um, I enjoy magic because I enjoy building decks. However, building decks from scratch, like I used to a few years ago, don't take you anywhere these days. So um, I get frustrated easily. Um, I would play Diablo, uh, which I was playing quite a bit. I was actually playing really often just a couple months ago. And I had a really awesome rogue I think almost level 90, I want to say. And then I kind of stopped because I got really busy. So gaming is what my, my preferred chill activity. I also love movies, um, kind of cheesy movies, romantic Christmas movies, like the typical Hallmark movies. Sign me up, I love that. <laughs> you know what I do when I have time? This is going to sound really funny, but I like to organize. Um, I live a very minimalistic life. I don't have a lot of junk, you know? Um, and I find... It's very relaxing to kind of go through my stuff and donate, get rid of things, make space for new things. You know, it gives me like peace and, and calm. There's some place that you would like to visit for vacation, but you haven't yet been to Europe. I would love to go to Greece. I think that would be awesome. I, actually, I would love to go to the UK. Um, there's really a lot of places kind of like on my checklist. Italy would be a great one. So I would say Europe as a whole because definitely on my bucket list. Do you ever go to Disneyland? What theme parks do you like? I've never been to Disneyland, you guys, but I have been to Legoland multiple times and Universal multiple times. Um, and I want to say I prefer Universal. However, my son prefers Legoland. So I feel like I've been doing Legoland for the last couple of years. We'll see what we do this year. It would be really nice to go to Disney and kind of check it out for the first time. If you could choose only one knife to carry during a zombie apocalypse, which one would it be and why? Thank you in advance. Okay, let me think about this quickly. Um, I would want like a kind of a badass knife, but something that I could store easy. I would say the Cold Steel Espada XL. I have reviewed it in my channel. You can go check it out. It's been a couple of years, but it's a great knife. It's really like a pocket sword. And when you actually open it, it's ginormous. It has a crazy blade, super sharp. I'm sure it would slay some zombies for sure. <laughs> Do you get recognized much? If so, what was the most awkward time? You guys, I have not gotten recognized much. Well, okay, on Blade Show, when I went to Blade Show my first year, because I was in that industry so much, I have signed knives, people taking photos with me. One time at the post office, somebody recognized me here. One time at the dollar store, you know, in Marco Island where I live, which is kind of like a smaller community. So that was kind of interesting. Nothing really awkward. Oh, there was a couple of people at the gym that recognized me but I'm not that popular. For the person that doesn't have a YouTube channel, maybe it seems like I'm like popular, but 330 something K is not quite popular. Um, I think that the way that YouTube measures your popularity is like, if you have something like 1 billion views on your channel as a whole, then your public recognition is eminent. And I have something like 300 million views. So I'm still a ways away. <laughs> What started you on your fitness journey? I love this question, you guys. What started me on my fitness journey was having a baby. Um, so I was a mom when I turned 28, I had my kid. And although I was always slim and all that, believe it or not, I left the hospital with my jeans on. Like I didn't gain much weight. My baby was super healthy and um, great, but I honestly didn't 
gain a lot of weight. I was also breastfeeding, so I lost a ton of weight. So by the time my baby was like three months old, I was like 99 pounds. Just for you to compare, like I'm about 117 right now. So imagine 18 pounds less on my body. It, it crazy, right? So I kind of felt like I needed to kind of get out there and do something. And I tried a lot of workouts for a year, but I felt like they were all cardio based. So I was getting shredded but skinny so i was looking kind of alien like yeah one of my friends kind of told me you know hey you're kind of doing it wrong why don't you actually like try to build muscle i got really inspired by it i got super confident because believe me i have not been this confident freaking ever my confidence started maybe four years ago um in my 20s, I wasn't really confident, not even as a teenager, to be completely honest with you. I was always comparing myself to people and I didn't really feel like I looked great. Now I can tell you for a fact that everything that I have done for myself has worked and I'm incredibly happy with the way that I look, even though, you know, I'm not in my 20s. I'm 36 years old, you guys. I'm kind of getting towards the 40s here and I am super happy, super, super happy. I look better now than I ever have to be completely honest with you. So I feel like fitness is an investment. It has taken me all this time to kind of feel super amazing. But hey, if you are like me and you really needed a change, you have to do it. It's the best thing you will do for yourself, for sure. Are you gonna go back to or start working knives back into videos? Been here a long time, missed the knife reviews. Okay, I like this question and here's why. I get this comment every now and then and I find it really funny because when I was doing knife reviews, I feel like although maybe like a hundred thousand of my current subscribers came from like the knife and gun industry, a lot of people really stuck around for the try-ons and all that. And it's funny because my audience is now mostly men because my channel has switched from a completely male dominant, you know, field and topic to something that's more applicable to anybody. I mean, my hope is that some ladies will find my channel and find the clothes and maybe like check them out for themselves. But I also realize that a lot of men buy for the women. A lot of men maybe find my aesthetic, something that they will like. So they kind of tune in. A lot of people like my personality, they like my bod, whatever it is, thank you for being here. I have never gotten a knife review gone viral that had made me really popular. But yeah, perhaps in the knife community, but not necessarily in YouTube. And I find that interesting. I think it's still kind of hard to see a woman review knives. There's not many of us, you know, Melissa Backwoods is one of them. I love her. She's my dear friend and she is killing it in the industry. And she has been in the industry much longer than me and she has stuck around with it. And I feel like she is probably like the best representation of like a woman in the industry. Now, for me, I have more things that I like that are not just knives. So I felt like I was really narrowing myself so much just doing knife reviews. Although I don't do as many knife reviews as I used to, I still like the knives. It's just that I wanted to grow on YouTube and uh, hey, I needed to get with the program, you guys. Like I can't just be doing knife reviews and getting, you know, 10,000 views when my try-ons mm -hmm. are, some of them are getting millions of views. So it's more of a business decision as well. Um, and I appreciate you missing the knives. If you do miss the knives, more of my knife content remains on Instagram. I do short videos there, short reviews on there. But the truth is, as much as I like knives, I also like other things. And fashion has been one of my main passions. So I decided to kind of like go full on in this direction. And I have experienced great success. So. I'm sorry you're missing the knife reviews, but I think you understand what I mean. Love your accent. Where are you from? Last question. How often do you work out to stay fit? I'm from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. Um, I have been in the US for 16 years now. So in a normal time of the year, not on during the holidays. But I work out at least three times a week. Uh, definitely focused heavy on the legs and the glutes. I incorporate upper body every now and then. And the reason for that is I have a good frame and um, I build muscle really quickly. So if I were to incorporate upper body workouts every single week, like I had in the past, I will get really big quickly. Um, so for me now it's fine tuning. But my hope is honestly to be able to do a little more. It's just that my lifestyle doesn't 
allow me to. Hey, on a good week, I can make it five days a week to the gym. I want to say on average, it's about three, if I'm being honest. Every girl has a beauty about her and some have more. My question to you is, if you didn't have this blessed gift, what would you be doing otherwise? Just curious. Huh, interesting question because I feel like I would be doing this even if I didn't feel beautiful, I guess. And sometimes I feel like my beauty is a blessing and a curse and I am not Kim Kardashian. But yes, my looks definitely help in the industry that I'm in, which is currently like mostly fashion, um, mainly because my body and my looks allow me to showcase clothes in the best possible way. That's the reality. When I was reviewing knives, I felt like my looks were detrimental to my knife knowledge. I've always felt that my looks were detrimental to my 12 years of graduate education, you know, my army experience, my bachelor's, master's, PhD. You guys, in my About Me video, I explain my whole education career. So you guys should check it out because it's pretty cool and I think pretty impressive and I'm very proud of it. I feel like sometimes looks might take a more of a protagonist role and your brain kind of takes a secondary role when you are pretty. I feel like it's a problem that a lot of people deal with. To me, my brain is my most favorite part of me, truth be told. I got a bunch of education, so this was not kind of like my first thing that I decided to do. I'm like, oh shit, I'm pretty. I'm gonna go on YouTube and I'm gonna showcase clothes because that's what I should be doing or I'm gonna be modeling for brands. This, you guys, this was an accident, okay? Like this is not what I planned to do and I'm glad it happened. When I was a teenager and I didn't feel really good about myself, someone would have told me, hey, you're gonna have a YouTube channel where you're going to be inspiring people. I get emails of women asking you what you're doing for a workout and how you stay so pretty and how what is your skincare routine. I would have been like, you're kidding me. I have educated myself so much so that I had different opportunities and I have done it all. You guys, I've been working since I was 16 years old in Argentina. My first job was in an accounting office. A lot of people always look at my place and they're like, oh my God, where's your rich husband? And I'm like, are you mofos, are you freaking serious? No, I had zero help. I have a crazy good education and I have made really good decisions in the past, including investment a little bit in real estate. And by investing in real estate, I'm not saying I have millions of dollars in the bank account and I said, I'm gonna buy something. No, I said one day I would like to purchase a place and I went and begged to the local credit union to give me a horrible loan with like a ridiculous interest rate. And I took it and I pretty much paid it off within the first year, um, working double jobs, saving a shit ton of money. And then that place that was, I think worth 115K, I was able to sell it for a little more and then I grabbed that equity and guess what? I was able to buy a better place next and you know, I, and I had a, a little bit of a better job. So what I'm trying to tell you is the story of someone that has worked her way up the ladder in some way um, to get the condo that I have now. This condo, you guys, I was barely able to afford it four years ago when I decided to move to Florida. I was working at Oracle thinking, oh my God, I work at Oracle, how amazing. I'm a data analyst, super cool. This chick is smart. When these words come out of my mouth, I work at Oracle, I'm a data analyst. People are gonna get floored. You guys, nobody got floored. I was making crap money and I was already a PhD holder and I stuck around for seven years being underpaid. And that was silly. That was super silly. Well, guess what? Now at 36 years old, I go pick up my son from soccer. And when the moms ask me, oh, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I'm a content creator. Or sometimes it comes out of my mouth. I'm a social media influencer. Anyway, I rambled on this one. I want to express that a lot of people don't know me and you people don't know a lot of people that are doing content creation on YouTube or anywhere. So I feel like sometimes it is necessary to tell your story and for the people that care, they will listen and they will kind of learn a, a thing or two. But the long story short is that I worked really hard for what I have and nobody gave me anything. I don't have a rich daddy. I don't have a rich husband and I'm not really rich by any means. And I have the best life for me and my son and I fucking love it. And haters are gonna hate. <laughs> what are your measurements?
let's go find out okay measurements o'clock surge is here my phone just died everybody <laughs> i'm in chaos but here we have it we're gonna keep it real real so you guys know that i'm not lying let's start with the waist which is my most favorite part hold on everybody so we're gonna show you from the back that i'm not like making it extra tight for no reason and that is at the smallest part of my waist there you have it what does it say 25 and let's call that 25 and a half honestly okay good good okay let's do the hips this one is always surprising to me when i do this because they always tend to be bigger than i think okay so we're gonna put it right there i think that's about midsection Okay, I'm, I'm not trying to deceive anybody. I think that's about it. So we're gonna go here. All right, do you guys read that? 38 and a half. So we're at 25 and a half, I think I said, 38 and a half. I am wearing a jacket, but I'll take it off. I can give you guys my, okay, that's a 34 right there. Um, but believe it or not, I'm actually, I actually wear 32. What is your favorite food? My favorite food, um, I love pasta. That would be my primary, I have a hair in my mouth. I do love ravioli, like butternut squash ravioli. I love those. Growing up, my most favorite was ravioli that had ham, cheese, and nuts. Um, my family used to buy them every Sunday in, in Argentina, love them. So I think pasta has always been my number one. What is your favorite color? What is your favorite band? I also saw this one. My favorite color is blue. I love red too. I wear a lot of black. I, I guess I'm not, if I have to pick a true favorite, probably I would go with blue, but I have a lot of really cool colors that I love to wear. Do you speak any other languages than English? Um, Spanish is my primary language, but I'm fluent in English, clearly. Although, honestly, I, I would think that English is not my primary because I don't know if I can speak Spanish as well as I can speak English these days. What is the square root of 26? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but I'm gonna answer. Okay, so if the square root of 25 is five, the square root of 26 is gonna have to be pretty close. So I'm gonna say 5.1. Are you looking forward to the new GTA game? I am, I never played GTA, but I hear this next one is gonna be spectacular. So maybe that's when Carla is gonna go back into gaming. You guys, I know that a lot of you really want to see me gaming. And I always say, I do not wanna turn gaming into a job. I already am taking my love for fashion into a job. So I feel like gaming is kind of like the thing that I did to relax. Um, I might be able to share some of that with you in the near future. I just, I don't, I don't know, maybe someday. Apparently, no one here knows how to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> so besides modeling underwear and lingerie, what other hobbies do you have? I feel like this question comes from a place of hate. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, you know, it's funny. Some people consider me a model, which is wild. Uh, some people consider me an influencer, a content creator, a person without a job. I have heard a lot of different things, uh, but I already covered my hobbies, so... Let's go with that. Carla, someone contacted me using your name and offering rewards. Rewards? Was that you just making sure you know this? No, it's not me. You guys, let me talk about this briefly because this is really important for me. I get these kinds of, you know, comments every now and then. I do not have Telegram. No, you're not talking to me. I am not in a relationship with you. You know, it's one of those things that is really unfortunate because people are using my images. Now with AI, it's a huge other problem. But no, none of that. There's a lot of bots even on my YouTube channel responding to comments. So just be mindful. And on a side note, you know, about a year ago, I was little fedevil on Instagram and I had 137,000 subscribers, followers. And today I'm Little Fit Devil Official with like 20 something thousand followers. And that is because my main account got hacked a few months back. The hacker created AI nudes of myself, sold them to people. And 
It was a really tough couple of months for me. Thank God that account is now banned, gone. Instagram decided to delete it. As I mentioned to you guys, there are no nudes of me on the internet, at least not real nudes. And that's kind of a funny story here. Um, I searched for my name not too long ago and what did it say? It was like leaked, leaked nudes or whatever of little fit devil. And I'm like, leaked nudes, what nudes? You know, I don't have anything to leak. So I click on it, there it goes. It was the AI generated photos that this person had posted on my Instagram when they took over it. And you guys, I mean, let me tell you what makes me the most mad about that story. It's not really the fact that there are AI generated nudes of myself in the internet. It is the fact that I look hideous. I promise you, I look so much better than what you may have seen in an AI generated photo. I do not have triple D giant lopsided tits, first of all. I do not have a tit here and a tit here. That's one. I do not have baloney sized nipples. I do not have cottage cheese coming out of my downstairs apartment, nor weird skin in the wrong places. Uh, and I'm definitely not hairy. So whoever decided to create these photos of me, bad job, like terrible job. And that is the part that I hate the most because I made a decision to not have nudes on the internet of myself for obvious reasons. And the fake nudes that are created are freaking horrendous, okay? So don't get fooled. If I decide to start selling nudes, why would I sell them on the story on Instagram where they're gonna ban me? If I decide to go that route, believe me, I'm gonna market it in the best possible way and it's definitely not going to be a pseudo naked photo on Instagram covered with emojis. Enough of that. Are you a dog or a cat person? I'm a cat person, 100%. I don't hate dogs, it's just that for me to be able to have a dog, it would have to be so well trained. It would have to be a smaller kind of animal. I'm gonna say I'm just a cat person for sure. What is your sign? I'm a Taurus, that's my sun sign, with a moon in Scorpio, Cancer rising. Are you married and got any children? I have an eight year old and I'm not married. Hi, Car, I'm Luke, healthy mind, healthy body. How do you achieve balance between mind and body? Kisses. I don't, I do not achieve balance. <laughs> If you only knew, if you only knew me, I'm stressed a lot. There's monsters that live in my head, but I try to stay positive. You know, there's a lot of great things that happen in my life and, you know, we can't just be focused on negativity and I'm working hard to develop better coping mechanisms. <laughs> like I'm sure a lot of you are. And this is funny because I have three degrees in psychology and I think that's the reason why I am so honest about this because I don't have a fix for you all. I keep myself busy on purpose. You know, I go to the gym a lot on purpose. That's kind of like my therapy and I recommend it 100%. Is the Patreon worth it? <laughs> you guys tell me. Okay, here's the deal on Patreon. You can actually join my Patreon for free, um, but you're not gonna have access to all of my stuff. It really depends on what you're trying to see. I think I already explained kind of what kind of content I provide, so. You tell me if it's worth it. You can always check it out for a month and then cancel. No big deal. And one thing about Patreon that I don't think I say ever, and I don't even think I mention it on the Patreon site. Whenever you join my Patreon, you have access to three years of photos. Like you don't just have access to like the latest post or the latest month. You literally have access to a library of photos for the last three years. I think it's kind of cool if you're looking to see more of me. Okay, hater incoming. Why do you think you have to sell a sexual fantasy? There's got to be more to you than that. Or is it simply that sex sells? I guess I get it. You know, I get that people are kind of close-minded and they don't see what I see in what I do. If you look through my content, if you are, let's say, a subscriber on my YouTube channel, I don't know what about my triumphs scream to this person that I am selling a sexual fantasy. I'm literally reviewing clothes. Uh, I review anything from bikinis to lingerie to jackets and workout gear and anything in between. So perhaps 
it is not me that is selling anything but the consumer perception of my content and that's something that i have zero control over so when i was doing live reviews i used to get the raunchiest comments at what point is it what i put out on my channel or the consumer's reaction to what i put on my channel food for thought i understand if somebody um, decides that my content is worthy of a turn on, but that's not the reason why I do it. Honestly, my hope for my channel and my content is that it would reach more women. But the truth is, because my channel started as a male focused channel because of my knife reviews, it is really hard for me to reach a wider female audience. So as the subscribers continue to climb, the female audience stays the same in terms of percentage. So definitely the audience is growing. It's just the percentage isn't. So, you know, it is what it is. I don't really have a lot of connections with women. And I don't know if it's, you know, the way I look or the way I behave or my personality or what it is. I'm not the girl that girls follow. Is that funny? Is that weird? I follow mostly women on my social media. I don't follow men, just a few, you know? Um, so to me, that's funny because I follow the hot chick. I follow Senada Greca that looks freaking amazing and I want to look like her. You know, I follow the lady that has super expensive clothing. You know, I follow really funny women that are doing kind of like entertaining style content. I even follow and subscribe to channels just like mine on YouTube because that's my competition. I want to see what they're doing. Some people will not follow you just because it's you and you look a certain way. Maybe it's my bad that I don't show vulnerability, that I'm not the mom or the woman or the person that is like going to complain to you right away or tell you like, oh, you know, I had a shitty day because, you know, this or that, or like my car broke down or, you know, I have a bad hair day or look at my pimple. I feel like I always express such gratitude for what I do and I'm always so happy and I'm so excited to share it with people that maybe I don't show vulnerability and people can't relate. And that's okay. That's okay. Somebody's asked me, are you happy? I'm so happy, you guys. I'm super happy. And I want to thank you all for allowing me to have this amazing, happy life, truthfully. Are you the type to get with a less educated man or he has to be the same level education? I don't think it's about the education level. I think it is about how smart you are. You have to be as smart as I am because um, otherwise I wouldn't be able to have a conversation. You also have to be witty. So even if you don't even have a bachelor's degree, but I know that you're super smart. I mean, a degree doesn't mean anything these days. Education doesn't mean anything these days. If I had to do this all over again, I probably wouldn't have gotten any of my degrees. And I am actually um, kind of instilling this into my son. I want to be a content creator. Do you want to have a gaming YouTube channel? Do you want to make vid video games for a living? I don't care. Hater number two of the day. And I think this is the last question. Okay, I have a question. Do you have a job? Ha ha ha. Ha ha. I don't know what that means and I don't even know if this guy wants me to answer the question. I think that I already answered it throughout my entire video so we're just gonna leave it there. But this is a good representation of the facts that haters are gonna hate and they see you having a blast here on YouTube and making good money and here they go hating like, do you have a job? I mean, you guys, I work on my YouTube channel, on my brand, on my Instagram account, all my content creation more than you think. So yes, I do have a job. Maybe it's not your idea of a job. So yes, I have a job. It's not the nine to five job that I go to an office and I'm complaining all day about. So I hope that clarifies the question, Mr. Hater. That does it. I really hope I answered a lot of your questions. If you like this video, please let me know in the comments. And if you have more questions, please ask them away in the comments because I will definitely be doing a series of these kinds of videos if you guys are interested. So questions, ask them below and I will take a peek at them when I'm ready for the next video. If you like what I do, consider liking, subscribing and commenting on this video. Please turn on post notifications. You can follow me on social media. Just search for Little Fit Devil. You can also support me here on Patreon where I provide early access to most of my YouTube videos, including exclusive photo shoots, exclusive stickers, the opportunity to chat with me, and a lot more perks. I really hope you're having an amazing day. I will see you guys soon in another one. Bye. I brought Serge for you all to see. He's my cutie pie. Say hi, Serge. Oh, he's purring. You're purring.